Okay, so let's start with our today's class. Uh, there shouldn't be any problem with the same, am I right? Link, foundation, concerns, Python and deep learning. So almost 541 students have filled up the attendance link, but as you are able to see only 100 people are there live. So I will have to put up some methods to sh like cut short the number of students who are filling up this attendance link to only those who are actually attending the uh, program itself. So I'll find some way to do that. Do not worry about the same because even if you are missing a single day's attendance, then you will not be able to get the certificate. So I will try my best that only those students who are able to attend these uh, like sessions live and they are really putting their efforts on are able to get these certificates. Okay. For those who are not able to join the WhatsApp groups, they can join the Telegram channel. Okay, the link to the Telegram channel is down in the description of the video itself. Okay, you can join the Telegram channel. All the updates that are sent to the WhatsApp groups are also sent to the Telegram channel as well. Okay. Okay. Let's get started out with the same guys. Let me just open. One more thing I wanted to share with you guys. So some of the new, like I have already shown you the graduates. But some new graduates came into being. Okay, we are still updating the list. For example, Tamme has been placed in Geo. We are having uh, Divya Shri who has been placed in Flipkart. Ishan who has been placed in Oracle. So there are many more students who have been placed in some new companies that we were able to like get the information of uh, in the past two days. So Shristi Shreya has been placed in uh, British Telecom. Uh, Amish has been placed in British Telecom. One more person has been placed in British Telecom. So there are three people who have been placed in British Telecom as well. A lot, many number of students, as you are able to see, have been placed in various different companies. And we are still updating the list. We are up, have, we have updated only 30% of the list itself. 70% more number of students have to be updated right now. We are trying our best so that uh, it is being updated in the next few days itself. So we'll just open up collaboratory and start from where we had previously left off. Uh, yeah, so we are having a discord channel as well. I have no idea where the link is. As soon as I'm able to figure it out, I will uh, put it in the description of the video and you guys can join me in the uh, discord channel as well. So we are trying our best to develop a community around the entire thing. Uh, but it will take some time, of course, but we are trying our level best to do so. Okay, so let's start with our today's uh, class. Okay, uh, yesterday we had completed, uh, I think so, type and type conversion was something that had been completed. Okay, we had completed up till here. We needed to complete, like we needed to start from right over here. Am I right? Okay, so here what has happened is we are having an integer three. Okay, we are converting it to a float and that uh, float in point number itself, we are storing it in decimal. So the type of decimal will be float itself. As you are able to see when we are running this particular line of code, you'll be able to see that the type of decimal is float. Okay. Uh, Pangas Kumar has a particular question about uh, ResNet 50. I've just used that as an example for some text itself. It's one of the models that are present in uh, deep learning. But right now it's just like think of it as some random text. Okay. Okay. So you're able to see that uh, the decimal itself is 3.0 and the uh, type of this decimal is uh, float as you're able to see on your screen. Uh, in the next example, we created a string from the integer marks and use that to create a larger string. So for example, we are having these variables as you're able to see marks is equals to 15. That's an integer subject is equals to coding semester is equals to first. And these two are strings in nature. We are having another uh, string called as result. As you're able to see, we are having your I scored then marks in subject during my semester semester. 
So if I'm trying to just like have marks right over here instead of uh, converting it into strings, so marks is an integer. So if I'm trying to append, if I'm trying to concatenate a string with an integer or an integer with a string, that will result in an error because these two don't have the same data type. So if I'm running this particular line of code, you will be able to see that we are getting an error that we can only concatenate string, not integer to string. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to convert these marks. That is the integer itself, whether it be an integer of load, it does not matter. We need to convert it into string. To do that, we just have to use type conversion str marks. Now this is 15 in string. And now we can append and concatenate the rest of the string together. So now we will be getting our answer as I scored 15 in coding during my first semester. Are you able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Guys, are you able to understand this? Please let me know. Amazing guys. Amazing. So let's move on with the same guys. Okay. We can also create an float from string. Okay. So for example, we are having a string called as marks. I want to convert it into float or an int. We can directly do that by using type conversion as you are able to see now marks is a float instead of being a string. Okay. Similarly, if I want to convert it into integer, just have to write int right over here and you will be able to see that we have converted it into integer. Okay. So type conversion is extremely easy to understand. Okay. There is not a lot of different uh, hardships that are there to understand in this particular topic. Okay, these are some of the uh, examples that I have placed for you guys. Try to do it. You will be able to understand a lot, many number of things uh, way beyond what is being taught to you in your college and your, in your school. Okay. There's not a lot of uh, things that are left 12, 13, and then 14, and then a little bit of extra things that I've included in this particular session. Now, one of the most important string methods that I use uh, very frequently when dealing with data science, okay, is the format method. Of course, you can uh, use like uh, this append string concatenation property to generate like uh, huge strings, okay, uh, very lengthy strings that contains various uh, variables inside of it. But it's a very tedious task to again and again write the string, then the uh, variable, then append it, then write the string, variable append it. It's a very huge line of code. So Python has provided an inbuilt function called as your format function to help you with the same. And this is something that you will be seeing very frequently when you're dealing with machine learning and deep learning code. So I thought that I should include it for you guys so that you are familiarizing yourself with something that uh, almost half of the population in like Python coders will be using at any point of time. We'll be using format string method a good bit in our future work in Python, and you will find it very valuable in your coding, especially your print statements. We can best illustrate how to use format by looking at some examples. So let's see, for example, I'm having this particular string. Okay. Muhammad has dash number of balloons. Okay. I want to fill in 27 right over here. The option is I can do one thing. I can have like Muhammad has, and then like plus, and then I str, I need to convert 27 to string and then plus and then balloons and so on and so forth. It's a very huge line of code. I do not want to write this. Okay. So to make things simple, I can directly write my string. Okay. Have a parenthesis curly brackets right over here and whatever value. So dot format 27, whatever value that I'm having right over here inside these brackets will replace the parenthesis. So for example, if I'm running this particular line of code, I'll be able to get Muhammad has 27 balloons. So the curly brackets got replaced by the integer itself. Similarly, if I'm going further with some particular multiple variables that I need to insert, for example, if I'm having animals equals to dog, action is equals to bite, print does your dash dash. Okay, we are having two curly brackets right over here. Dot format animal comma action. So what will happen is the first curly bracket will be replaced by the first variable and the second curly bracket will be replaced by the second variable. And those variable basically contains the value dog and bite. So we'll be getting the answer as does your dog bite. 
Similarly, when you are having a particular string as a particular variable, so Maria loves uh, something and something, you are having this as a particular variable, so you can use it directly as well, Maria string dot format and then your uh, text that you want to replace inside that particular string. Are you guys able to understand what I'm saying? This is as simple as it gets, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know in the live chat because see, if you are able to interact with me, then only I'm able to understand whether you guys are able to understand what I'm trying to say, okay? Please try to interact with me guys because that is how I'm able to understand what you are thinking about. Otherwise, you will not be able to like learn anything new from this and it will be a total waste of your time, okay? I don't want uh, you to do that, okay? Time is ex ex exceptionally precious for anyone. So try to like reply me in the live chat. Try to understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, if you are having questions, try to ask that. I will try my best to answer those questions as well. Okay. Okay. Amazing guys. Amazing. Still see, I'm able to see like 10 people writing yes in the live chat. There are 135 people in the entire uh, session itself. I want to see 135 people writing yes in the live chat. Okay. Notice how in each example, the number of pairs of curly brackets you use inside the string is the same as the number of replacements you want to make using the values inside format. More advanced students uh, can learn about the formal uh, syntax using the format string method here. So for example, you can go right over here. I've put up some of the links as well. You can go here you can check through the entire documentation of format method. What are the different things that you can do with the format method as well? So those who are interested to learn a bit more than what I've taught up till this point of time can go through this. Of course, in the data and scientist training and internship program, we go through the entire depths again and uh, most of the students are able to do that okay it's very simple guys whatever string that you are having okay you want to put some variables you want to put some text you want to put some numbers inside of it so instead of doing type conversion every single time dot format method will be able to do it for you so whatever uh, curly brackets are there they will be replaced by the value present inside the format method and that is how you use this instead of uh, having this concatenation method instead of having this entire concatenation method you are able to do this so if i if i want to write the same thing okay if i want to write the same thing uh, in uh, using the format method okay result to let's say it as that is equals to control v let's remove the entire thing okay let's remove this my semester let's put up a curly brackets here because i want to insert something here let's remove this as well let's insert a curly bracket here let's remove this as well let's insert a curly bracket here so instead of uh, like up till now what we were doing is we were having the concatenation right over here i can just write dot format okay and then in parenthesis i can just write marks i don't even have to use try uh, type conversion we do not even have to use type conversion i can directly write marks sub jct subject and then i can directly write your semester as simple as that <coughs> i'm so sorry for the same so this is how you will be able to write the same thing okay print uh raise your lg result 2 right over here run this particular code you're able to see that we are able to get the same thing right over here just that we have to we have a particular writing format that the string is all together right over here i just have to write the string once and then i can just insert all the variables back inside okay are you guys able to understand up till now <laughs> i am so sorry for the same okay so are you guys able to understand up till now please let me know guys amazing amazing guys amazing so uh let's move on to the next thing right over here lists and membership operators this is what we are going to do right now data structures are containers so like try to understand what are data structures we have learned about the different data types that are there Okay, now, uh, so think about data types as a different kind of uh, materials that you use to build a building. So it may be like um, cement, it may be your gravel, it may be the bricks, it may be concrete and so on and so forth. 
So you are having all various materials. Think of them as your data types, but they need to come together. They need to come together to form different type of buildings. Okay, it can be a glass building. It can be a, a Taj Mahal. It can be a mud house. It can be a normal building of some sort. So these type of buildings are called as data structures. You can think of data structures as containers that organize and group data types together in different ways. Okay, a list is one of the most common and the basic data structures in Python and in other languages it is usually called as arrays but in Python we'll be referring to it as list. It is a mutable ordered sequence of elements. So yesterday we left out what is immutable ordered sequence of elements. We are going to understand it after we have studied lists. Okay, once we have studied lists, we will be able to understand what does mutable and immutable ordered or unordered sequence of elements actually mean. Okay, amazing guys, amazing. The code below defines a variable student uh, which contains a list of strings. Each element in this list is a string that signifies the name of a student. The data inside a list can be a mixture of any number and combinations of different data types. That is a list can contain strings, integer, bool, float, every single type of data type that you have learned up till now, a string can contain all of them at the same time. Okay. This is one of the examples that I've created for the students uh, list that you are able to see. So you're having Sam, Pam, Rocky, Austin, Steve and Banner. Okay, lists are uh, ordered. We can look up individual elements by their index. We can look up elements just like we have done below. Okay, so for example, so we have already studied, like we have already discussed that strings are also ordered in nature. We have also learned that lists are also ordered in nature. So what does that mean? Okay, that means that using the index, using the address of a particular element, we can access that. For example, in the students uh, list, let me just run this particular line of code. If I want to get the add, so in Python, Python is a zeroth indexed language. That means that it starts counting from zero. So Sam is present as the location zero. Pam is present at the location one. Rocky is present at the location two. Austin is present as the location three. Steve is present as the location four. And uh, Banner is present as the location five. So I'm running students zero. So what does student zero signify? Student zero, like Sashank has said it very clearly, is Sam. Similarly, student one signifies Pam. Okay, so student two signifies Rocky. So when I'm running this particular line of code, you will be able to see Sam, Pam and Rocky being printed on the screen. Yes, Aryan, it's very similar to arrays in other languages. Okay, but we refer to it in Python as lists. Okay, so do not say arrays because you will be studying about NumPy arrays in the future. It's a bit different from uh, lists. So you would refer to it as lists. Yes, we also have negative indexing as well. So for example, minus one. Okay, so if this is zero, if Sam is zero, Pam is one, Rocky is two, Austin is uh, three, Steve is four, Banner is five, what would be minus one? So minus one would be banner minus two would be Steve minus three would be Austin minus four would be Rocky minus five would be Pam and minus six would be Sam. So we'll be having the indexes from minus six to plus five. So there is no minus seven index. There's no plus six index. Okay. So it go in just from minus six to plus five. So if I'm doing minus one right over here, you will be able to see that we are able to get Sam, Banner and Rocky. So for minus one, we are able to get Banner. That is the last uh, element in our list. Okay, we are going to study about it right now. Like here itself, it is there. Notice that uh, when we, uh, that the first element in the list is accessed by zero. Many programming language follow this convention as called as zero based indexing. Okay, so Python is a zero based indexing language. Okay. We can also access the elements from the end of the list using negative indexes. Okay. Okay. So someone has asked, uh, like, why can't we write minus zero? There's nothing like plus zero and minus zero. It's, it's just zero. Like it's basic mathematics. Do I need to explain that? Like, I hope that the people in the live chat will be able to concur with me. Plus zero and minus zero is nothing like there's nothing like plus zero and minus zero. It's just zero. Okay. 
again uh, more people are asking about the same um, see there's nothing as minus zero or plus zero okay it's just zero there's like minus one and plus one are two different uh, numbers that are having a difference of two minus zero and plus zero is the exact same thing that is just zero okay zero is neither positive nor negative as someone has said okay there's nothing like minus zero guys be well i'm familiar with your uh, like yeah so minus zero is zero like there's nothing as minus zero this like there's no concept of minus zero like it does not exist it's just zero that exists okay Z yeah nishant has said it correctly zero is neutral it does not has any sign okay it is neither positive nor negative okay please remember this guys you need to clear your basics man it's really very important so uh students minus one uh, students minus two and students minus three let's run this right over here you are able to have banner steve and austin the last three uh like elements in our array okay sorry i'm so sorry in our list okay do not make the same mistake as that i did we need to call it as lists and not arrays okay no issues in that it, it, like i'm feeling great talking to you guys like the, the entire day it went like shit so <laughs> when i'm talking to you guys it, it feels like i am able to interact with someone so it feels good okay if you try to access an index that does not exist then it will give you an error as shown below so like i said this particular list contains uh, like uh, indexes from minus 6 2 plus 5 so i'm able to put 20 or minus 20 i will be getting an error because that does not exist so if i'm running this particular line of code you will be able to see that list index out of range the index of this particular list is out of range there is no 20th index okay that's what it is saying to us right now okay try to do this questions okay i have having some of the answers as well like i don't know why i put the answers but like see try to do it on your own try to understand okay so that you guys are able to like uh, code it as well it's not just about listening to what i'm saying but i also a bit of practicing is something that is of as an essential uh, usage to you guys okay okay again you guys have become silent in the live chat okay try to try to answer as many number of questions as you can okay okay i say okay a lot many number of times <laughs> uh, i was again going to say okay <laughs> okay membership operators on lists okay we are going to do a uh, membership operators that are there present on lists as well uh, in addition to accessing individual elements from a list we can also use python slicing notations to access a subsequence of a list Okay, so not just that we are going to uh, like get the uh, first element or the last element or the sixth element. We can also access a range of elements from a particular list. It is called a slicing in Python. Slicing means using indices to slice off parts of an object like list or strings. For example, if I am having two examples right over here, students and Barry. Okay, we are having students and Barry right over here. So students have created an array of Sam, Pam, Rocky, Austin, Steve, Banner, Tony, Bruce, Henry, Clark, Diana. Okay, I've used names of some normal people. Okay, Sam is now a part of the MCU, so we will have to shift him from here to somewhere else. Okay, let's let's just shift him from here to like let's say here. Okay, so <laughs> we have to shift Sam from the normal people to uh, now the eventual level threat itself. So they're having Sam, Steve, uh, Banner, Tony, Bruce. Uh, so Bruce can be Bruce Banner as well as well as Bruce Wayne from uh, DC. So Batman fan always. Then your Henry Clark and Diana. So that are also a part of the DCU. Okay, so we are going to have a lot more number of uh, people saying that okay, DC is better than uh, Marvel or Marvel is better than uh, DC. At the end of the day, it's just that Batman will just kill them all. So the debate is just over right over there. <laughs> no issues in that. So let's start, and then we are having one more uh, variable called a student that is Barry. Okay, now we are going to use this slicing uh, notation right over here. Uh, <laughs> So let's have uh, the slicing for a particular range. So when we are slicing four to seven, let's see what happens. Okay. So what is the fourth index? Let's see. Zero, one, two, three, and four. So the four is Steve. Okay. And five, six, and seven. Seven is Bruce. 
we are starting from 4 and I'm ending up till 7 okay so 4 will be included okay that is Steve will be included but the 7 will not be included try to try to remember this okay we are going to start from 4 will include 4 we'll start from 4 we'll go up till 7 okay we are not going to include 7 we are going to go up till 7 okay that is how this slicing operation works always remember from up till from up till so in that way you will never mess it up again similarly for your uh, string as well when you're going with 1 2 3 that is 0 1 1 is your a and 2 3 that is your r so you'll just get a r as your output as we are going to start from 1 and go up till 3 that's it okay so you're going to get a r as your answer yeah something has happened so you're going to get a r as your answer right over here Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Again, there's a lot of silence in the live chat. <laughs> are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. great let's move on from here uh so that is it slicing from the end okay so for example if i want to get from seven so for example i want to start from seven that is bruce and go up till the end i don't know how many elements are there in the entire list i want to start from seven and i want to go up till the end for that i just need to specify seven and then colon and then nothing that means i want to go up till the end Okay, so for example, right over here, if I'm running this particular line of code, we'll be able to see that we are going to start from 7 or we are going to start from 1 and go up till the end. Okay, similarly, if I want to start from the start and go up till a particular element, then I can directly write, I need to start from nothing and go up till 4. So when I'm running this particular line of code, you'll be able to see that we are getting Pam, Rocky, Austin and Stam as our output and we are getting bar as our output for your strings as well okay again length is something that we have already studied for strings okay so you are having length in strings that gives you the number of elements in that particular string it's a number of characters in that particular string but what about a um, list okay what about a list in list when you are using len it will return to you the number of elements in that particular list so for example in this particular small list we are having one element two element three element and four element similarly in the students list we'll be having much more number of elements as you're able to see there are 11 elements okay there are 11 units 11 strings present inside the list or named as students whereas there are just five characters that is in Barry there is just five characters present inside that string okay of the types we have seen lists are most familiar to strings okay almost slicing is the same indexing is the same you are having your uh, uh, like uh, membership operators length is also a particular thing that is the same between them so here above you have seen that the length of a string is the number of characters in that string whereas the length of a list is the number of elements in that particular list okay another thing that they both support are membership operators both strings as well as lists support membership operators what is membership what do you mean when you hear the like when you hear membership in your mind what does it mean you are a member of a particular club or you're not a member of a particular club are you inside the club or are you not inside the club so similarly in python as well you have having membership operators okay the in operator and the not in operator the in operator evaluates if an object on the left hand side is included in the object on the right hand side is this object a member of this particular club or not similarly in not in evaluates if the object on the left hand side is not included in the object on the right hand side so person and club try to remember it like that okay in not in so for example let's take up this particular example right over here greeting okay greeting is hello there this is a particular string a okay. print her in greeting okay print her in greeting is her present in greeting or not okay 
so as we are able to see from right over here h e so okay we are not getting r so we are able to see that we are having h e r right over here so yes her is present in greeting so her in greeting yes it's true okay her in greeting is true her not in greeting is false so when i am running this particular line of code we are able to see that true and false being printed on your screen similarly you are having shape ai in students shape ai not in student so we already remember the entire list that we created are you able to see shape ai in the students list no we are not able to see shape ai in the students list so this will return false shape ai in student list no shape ai is not present in student list so this is false similarly shape ai not in students yes this is true okay so when we are running this you will be able to find it so if we take negatives like minus 1 to the end okay if that the case it will just take the last element nothing else okay okay now coming back to our original question about mutability and order okay so how lists are different from strings both support slicing indexing in not in operators the most obvious difference between them is that string is a sequence of characters okay strings is a sequence of characters well as lists are elements that can be objects like string integer floats bool etc so that is one of the most common uh, difference that anyone will be able to tell you but the second difference that most people don't know is a more important difference is that list can be modified but strings can't okay let's try to understand it by an example itself so you are having a particular list right over here okay it's called as students and i want to replace i want to replace rocky by ben okay i want to replace rocky by ben so i can directly write student 2 is equals to ben and when i'm printing students you will be able to see that rocky has been replaced by ben that is i'm able to edit i'm able to manipulate the list itself i'm able to modify the list itself but when it comes to your strings okay you are having a student named as barry uh, we need to change his name as berry i just need to replace the a with e okay so if i'm writing student 1 is equals to e okay that will give me an error as you are able to see that will give me an error str object does not support item assignment if i need to change the name from berry to berry then i have to have it completely redone that is i will have to write student is equals to b e r r y and that is how i can replace this string eventually i cannot modify it i can only replace it okay and mutability is about whether or not we can change an object once it has been created this is called as mutability if an object like list or strings can be changed just like list scan it is called as mutable hence lists are mutable and ordered however if an object cannot be changed without creating a completely new object like strings then objects are considered to be immutable hence strings are immutable and ordered are you able to understand this please let me know guys are you able to understand guys please let me know similarly order is about whether the position of an element similarly order is about whether the position of an element in the object can be used to access that element both strings and lists are ordered we can use the order to access parts of a list and string however you will see that some data types in the next sections are unordered in nature for each of the upcoming data structures that you see it is useful to understand how you index are they mutable and are they ordered knowing this about the data structure is exceptionally useful so of course you are not going in depth in the entire program so these are the no uh, notes and the notebooks that we use while teaching in our data scientist training and internship programs as well so they have a lot like just like in the first 15 days uh, we only teach python and nothing else we cover oops and all the different topics all the advanced topics in python including the data types and everything so that's why like uh, some of the things will not be covered in the boot camp itself uh, but because this is just one part of the entire uh, 15 days of python that we have 
in our um, training and internship programs but yeah like there are a lot many number of data structures that may not be ordered or may not be mutable in nature as well if in the future uh, you guys are joining these data scientist training and internship program you guys will be able to know about them as well okay Additionally, you will see how these uh, each have different methods. So why you use one data structure over the other is largely dependent upon these properties and what you can do easily with them. Okay. Uh, previously, when we created a variable that had held an immutable object like string, the value of the immutable object was saved in the memory. Okay. This is not something that is important for you guys. Okay. This is something that I will be leaving out for now because this is an advanced topic and I don't want uh, to uh, like cover it right over here. Okay, these are not important right now. We will directly shift to tuples. These, the above sections I've left it for right now because uh, we won't be using it while we'll be doing our project. So it will be redundant. So we'll not be wasting our time upon that. Okay. Uh, okay, a tuple is another useful container. It's a data type for immutable ordered sequence of elements. So a tuple is also immutable ordered sequence of elements. So what is the other thing that we know about? Strings. Strings are also immutable ordered sequence of elements. So are strings and tuple the same thing? No, they are not. You can think of tuples as lists that are immutable in nature. Lists that cannot be changed that are tuples okay for example like they are usually used to uh, store related pieces of information for example uh, length uh, width and height or xyz coordinates or uh, your volume of a particular object volume and surface area of a particular object and so on and so forth so any uh, type of information that are related to each other are usually stored in tuples again tuples look like lists but have the functionality of a string okay they look like lists have the functionality of the immutable ordered sequence of elements that is like of string okay please remember this so this is an example this is how you create a particular tuple it's not compulsory to put brackets you can just remove the brackets from right over here and it will still work the same but usually i prefer keeping the brackets just to make sure that yes this is a tuple both you it's not compulsory to keep the brackets it's just a practice to keep brackets while creating tuples so that they are visually uh, like they, you are able to differentiate them at any point of time okay so when i'm running this particular line of code you will be able to see that we are having coordinates x y and z okay tuples are similar to lists in that they store an ordered collection of objects which can be accessed by their indices just like lists however uh, unlike lists Tuples are immutable. You cannot add or remove an item for the tuples or sort them in place. Okay, there are once you've created a tuple, it's done. You can only replace it. You cannot modify it in any way because it's immutable in nature. Tuple can also use to be assigned multiple variables in a compact way. We have already done that in the very early uh, codes that we had written in this particular section. You, if you remember it correctly, we had done the multiple assignment operator. Now, if you remember it correctly, this is nothing else but a tuple as well as this is nothing else but a tuple of variables. So you can easily assign, okay, you can, the entire multiple variable assignment operation is just assigning one tuple values to the other. Okay, so we have already done it. So I don't think so I need to uh, revise over the topics. You can put this into brackets. Like I said, you do not need brackets to make a tuple, but still just for the courtesy of the things can put it in brackets and it will still work the same okay okay so we were on tuples the parentheses are optional while defining tuples programmers frequently omit them if the parentheses do not clarify the code but usually try to include it whenever possible okay so for example i've created this particular tuple that is the location that is the longitude and latitude I have used the multiple assignment operator right over here. This is another tuple of variables and I have assigned the tuple of values to that. So latitude is now this particular value and longitude is now this particular value. And the coordinates are, you can use the latitude and longitude right over here. Okay. As you are able to see, we are having the latitude and longitude right over here. And that is the tuple values that we can use directly inside the um format value so it's as simple as possible 
In the second line, the two variables are assigned from the content of the tuple location. This is called as tuple unpacking. Okay, so you are having one tuple that you are having. You are assigning it to another tuple. This is usually called as tuple unpacking. Okay, uh, you can use tuple unpacking to assign information from a tuple to various uh, multiple variables without having to access them one by one and making multiple assignment statements okay we don't need to use the location directly we can shorten these two lines of code as well so you are having location right over here uh, and directly you instead of having everything we can just have location i guess I'm not wrong. Okay. Tuple index out of range. I think so. I have done something fishy here. Uh, assign the three variables in one go. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing is you don't have to do this like this. You can directly use the multiple assignment operation right over here itself. And here replace this by that. And it's done. So this is how you can like instead of writing it in three different lines, you can do it in a single line of code as well. Then you just need to run it and it will work absolutely fine. Okay, as you're able to see on our screen. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please do let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please do let me know, guys. What is the use of having tuples if we can use list? You cannot use list for these multiple variable assignment operations. Okay, you can only use tuples for the same. Uh, there are variable uh, like use cases of tuples as well as it is not editable. So it has a lot of data safety features as well because you cannot edit it at any point of time. There are variable reasons that we use it. Okay, but it's way beyond what is for the course itself. No worries in that. Okay, so that would be it i will be showing the attendance link for today okay so let me have the attendance link on my screen right now please take a screenshot for the same okay take a screenshot fill up the attendance form properly okay uh attendance form always works there is never an issue with the attendance form okay it's a youtube video you can rewind it back and see the attendance link as well at any point of time let's see if we are able to get some responses just to make sure that people are able to fill it up properly as well okay so uh, that would be it for today okay uh, we'll be meeting tomorrow at the same time Please be on time guys. I am able to see that most of you are joining in the second half of the entire thing itself. Please be on time so that we are able to complete the uh, thing as well. I've already shown the link. It's a YouTube video. You can just like slide it back and watch the link again. Okay. I don't think so. That is that I need. Okay. So thank you so much guys. We'll meet tomorrow and we'll do it once again. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Thank you.